So in this video, I wanted to talk to you about a prediction market where you can bet on things like the weather, how hot is it going to be in, in a given city, how much is it going to rain, what the S&P 500 might do, what will gas prices be like at the pump, you know, lots of very cool things that you can bet on. And also, if you're not interested in betting, but you want to see what people are thinking who actually put their own money on the line, you can use Kelshi to do that. So Kelshi is, you know, this website, they say they're regulated by the Commodities and Futures Trading Commission, I believe it's called the CFTC, I forget that abbreviation, but, you know, it is allegedly legit and you can do it. So it's, it's super cool. It's, I think it'll be a, a great thing for economists and you know, any type of analyst. There's lots of good data. They publish, you know, what determines the settlement of a given thing. So in this case, given thing is gas prices. They publish, you know, what they're determining as the official market for that. It's this third party, generally the government or other more legit people that are setting their own reports and they'll use that to sort of determine who wins so people can't mess with the outcomes. So this one is the U.S. Uh, Energy Information Agency, and this is for gas prices. So it's pretty cool, and I wanted to show you how you could use this to estimate you know, the future using the market information, and then also show you how you could use it in a later video to sort of hedge your, your, your life. So say you're about to plan a big barbecue, you bought a ton of brisket and all these, all these, all these things, and if it rains, nobody's going to show up. So what you could do is buy the yes contract on Kelshi saying it's going to rain. That way, either way, you either you don't lose as much money and you get to have some funds that you put in your, you know, your happiness amount, you know, how much money would make you happy if your party got canceled and you can buy that much of a yes. So pretty cool stuff. It should be very interesting to allow people to put their money where their mouth is and hopefully provide the world with more information. So here we go. This is my Jupyter Notebook. If you haven't worked with it before, I have some tutorials on my YouTube channel. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already, as well as please give me any feedback or let me know your questions. I'm happy to you know, create more content tailored to what you're interested in. So here we go. I have the secret services and we're going to be working with the Kelshi API. And it's super bare bones, which I kind of like. It's great for learning. So here, this is my pie charm. This is where I sort of work with things. I've created a template here. You just need to copy this to your own secret services.py, put in your username and password, never updated, uploaded to GitHub or anything. You create sort of a separate hidden file like I have here. Also, I've downloaded the Kelshi API starter code. It's in Python. You can find it at their API docs. And I just put it into this file so we could import it very easily. All right. So here we go. I'm importing everything, got my password, and we can instantiate an instance of the Kelshi Exchange client. And next up, we're gonna use pandas and the get public markets command to determine, or to return all this data on, on Kelshi. But yeah, that's it, it's super cool. Just looking at this data, I recommend you take you know, a long look at all the different columns you have access to here and you know see what type of markets you may be interested in on the website you'll notice there's these range group tickers so these could be helpful if you're trying to you know link things that are, are related together in the case of like the sp 500 there was a end of day value contract or there is one actually for tomorrow and here's the different values so it's the market's just starting People are trying to figure out uh, what to do right now. Greater than 3,600 is way up there in the lead based on where the S&P is at right now. So by using the value here, this will give you all the different contracts linked to this sort of overarching thing. So you can actually use this information, the, the different probabilities, the different yes, no values to estimate what the probabilities of values really should be and use that to get a more informed prediction of the stock market. We'll do, the, do this actually first with gas prices for a hypothetical road trip I'll take. So on June 20th, say I wanted to go on a road trip, I wanna know how much gas cost. I can analyze this data and, and use that to get a better idea 
of gas prices. Now it isn't a perfect one-to-one -one with gas prices I may experience. That's a big issue with sort of hedging your events with, with things like this, trying to get specific enough. However, you could see, you know, how does your area correlate to the all grades conventional areas gas price? Hopefully it lines up reasonably well to your road trip and you can sort of tweak the values to get a, a decent baseband. Okay. So back to the notebook, we have all the markets loaded. I'm just going to show you one market real quick. So here's all the columns and we've got these IDs. There's another command called get order, but that, that's super nice for understanding what may happen on the market. I'll explain more in a second. So as a just show and tell, this doesn't work, but if you change the market to something you know, more current, there will be an actual order book shown for you. I believe you can also get historical order book information. You may need to get in touch with Kelsey for that though. Anyways, I've uh, now filtered by the gas, is it the ticker, the range group name, sorry. So by just searching in that range group name, I found all three contracts that you can see on the website. There's that 4, 9, 5, and 5, 10. And this is all, will gas prices be greater than this value? So we don't know. People bet that it's 4.951 on the dot. This is all different ranges that you can, that you can choose. And here's that order book command. It's super cool because you can see, you know, information that it's normally something expensive or so fast that it, it's hard to work with on conventional like stock trading. So here you can see you know, how deep the book is, as you could call it. So we can see there's a yes here. This first uh, number in each pair is the price of a yes. The second number is the amount of contracts or, or dollars, dollars, I believe, being bid on. And you see that's 251. On the other side, we see 43 and six. So because that's a no, it's actually a one minus 43 or, or one hundred minus 43. So it's saying that the yes is at 52 with 251 contracts. The no is really at 57 and six. So the spread between the ask and the bid is just five, but five cents. And the, the depth on that, that 57 on the no, that, that, you know, 43, that's equivalent is pretty low, so it, you know it could be argued that it's even farther apart. It, it could be a, a, a you know, six cents away. And I'm not sure all the rules Kelsey has on market manipulation and order books, because there's a lot of funny stuff. People could sort of fake orders and, and sort of mess with you. However, it's let, let's assume for now that it's it's a pretty legit. Um, they, they ban people for manipulation and things like that. Okay, so that's that's the order book. And I should have mentioned how the contract works too. If you buy a yes and this comes true, you get a full dollar. So you pay 50, 57 cents and yes comes true. You you got one dollar 50, 57 cents. It's sort of like a two to one return, a, a bit less, but that's it. Anyways, let's uh, keep going. I'm gonna show you how you can estimate gas prices now. So here I filter just a lot of price information. We can see things like volume, that's you know how active it is, liquidity and, and things like that. So the API center, I believe, defines all these terms and what they mean for Kelshi. That's very similar to, to stock trading. Okay. And here, while I was making this, I work with specific specific set of prices. So we're just gonna set that hard coded. However, you feel free to comment this out if you don't want. But we're gonna calculate the numerical value from this mini title here and then use that information to programmatically estimate the true gas price based on what Kelshi market participants are saying. Here we go, we're plotting this implied chance. Now I've set that to the last price. I believe that's the last trade for the given contract. So notice that 4.9 is the last price at 59, but people are saying that'll probably happen 59% of the time. And also be aware that if it's a greater than 4.9, it should always include 5 and 5.1. So if something, if 4.9 was like 7, that would be ridiculous and there would be what's called an, an arbitrage opportunity most likely because that should never happen based on 
the rules of probability. If something has more events in it, it's more likely to happen. Okay, so here we're plotting our implied chance. Again, remember, it's a greater than. So we have our, our 0.57, I believe, then that 0.8, and then the 0.02. Now, if we wanted to know probability greater than the number, and that was interesting to, to us, we, we could just run with this. However, I'm going to show you how you can calculate the probability of the price ending up in one of those different buckets, so between 4.9 and 5. And we can actually just do that by subtracting. It's pretty straightforward. If you wanted to get the price of 5 to 5.1, you just have to subtract out the probability of 5.1 or greater. So you can see that 0.8 becomes 0.06, the 0.57 becomes 0 0.06, 0 0.02, which is 8, takes it to 0.49. And that's because you don't want to double count. You can't subtract the greater than 5, the greater than 5.1, because you're double counting the 5.1 there. And I also added in the probability of you know, negative infinity to 4.9. Who knows, maybe one day they'll pay you to take their gas because it's so flammable or toxic and it's a terrible thing like what happened with other markets in the past. So a little silly, but technically it's right. So put that in there with our function. Now to come up with an estimate, the simplest thing we could do is just do what's called a maximum likelihood estimate. So you take the most likely probability, that's this 0.49, which shows a value between 0.9. 4.9 and in five dollars, but that's our maximum likelihood estimate. So we're done. You can say that's probably what's going to be. If that's good enough for you, you can stop here. However, another thing we can do is a weighted average. So you just take the probability of an event, and then you times that by you know the price at that event. So it would be 4.9 times 0.49, 5 times 0 0.06, 0 0.02 times 5.10. And then add that up and then divide over the sort of probability space you worked with. And that would give us a value down here of 4.917. So it's it's a little bit different than just the, the range estimate, but it, it should be a little bit more accurate. Now there is an issue with our approach. We just took the low point of each range. And there's an argument, you know, where in that should should the curve be? If we scroll up here, we can see there's quite a large decrease between 4.9 and 5 on the probabilities, suggesting that it's probably in that range. However, you know, just how steep and where should we assign the most weight to our weighted average is up for debate. So yeah, um, let's go ahead and actually improve that. So rather than use our point estimates, we can try to fit a function to our three points here and then use that to estimate the actual value of gas or the actual estimate of, of gas based on based on Kel So we're going to use SciPy. They have this function called curve fit that tries to fit any arbitrary function you give it and minimize you know some form of error. I forget what the error used in this function is, but it you know tries to optimize your prices or your your function to this type of function. I ran that, I subtracted by 4.9, and I, I did this on a, on a power law. So something that goes like this, off the screen here, got to get better at that. Go the other way, there we go. So the power law kind of looks like this, and it has a longer tail. Um, that can be useful in finance because the probability of a far out event is generally higher than most people expect, and that's reflected in those types of power law or Pareto distributions. Anyways, here's our curve. Here's our estimate of the various functions. So P opt is showing the values of M, C, and C0. These are our estimates of the power law distribution. Now you can sort of argue with this and sort of go into it, but this is just a crude way to show how we could fit a function and use that to improve our estimate of the true estimate of, or the true prediction of Kelsey prices held by all the market parent participants. Here we go. If we plug that in with a value of 5, we get 0 0.06. I believe our value was actually 0 0.06, so it tried to fit on what we gave it. Oh, I apologize. 
this value is 0.08. That's why it's a little bit off, I believe. Okay. So I'm just plotting here what our predictive curve looks like and what the you know piecewise linear version looks like. You can see this huge sharp drop off here. So that suggests that you know our function isn't a great one. It, it still could be pretty decent. But I would like to see something that's a little bit smoother. So maybe we have to go back to our, our stats knowledge, or if someone in the, watching this video knows a better distribution, please suggest it. And I'll, and I'll change this. But that's our crude estimate. And here's our, our better estimate using this fit function. So we just take our x times our y predicted. It's our new function. We're just doing a integral approximation divided by the, the sum. And we get a new estimated price of $4.96 at the pump. So if I was going on a road trip, I wanted to be, you know, a data junkie, I could say, you know what, I think I'm going to pay 4.96. And that's what it's going to be. So yeah, so that's how you use Calci to estimate things based on the markets. You could do it also for things like the S&P 500. Notice this one already has the information in the different ranges. So Lots of times Kelsey does that, and you can use those different observations, what people are betting on for different market outcomes, and use that to create a better prediction. So this data could be a little bit more actively traded, and if you check tomorrow, you might get a better sense of what people are predicting, the difference between you know the maximum likelihood and this fit function that we're working with. Anyways, thank you for watching. I hope this shows you, or at least taught you about Kelsey a bit, gets you excited about it, and gives you some ideas on how you could work with that data to make your own estimates. And then in the next video, I'll show you what it means to hedge something. So if you're really upset about a vent or just want to, you know, max or minimize your risk while having some, some, some enjoyment in your life, you could hedge things. It's called a happiness hedge sometimes if you you know, bet on the other sports team than your favorite one, like me betting on the Packers or something that would, you know, be a little rough, but sometimes it's, sometimes it's fun. Anyways, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next one.